Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white artifact deck featuring four copies of Yotia Declares a War, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a two-mana read ahead saga that on chapter one makes an ornithopter token. On chapter two we can tap any number of untapped artifacts we control, and if we do we deal that much damage to a creature or planeswalker, and finally up to one target artifact we control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness 4-4 until end of turn, so it can even and animates some of our non-creature artifacts like Experimental Synthesizer. So Declares War can be a pretty nifty saga, can play especially nicely alongside Reign of Truth, which can pump a creature equal to the number of artifacts and or enchantments we control, since Declares War can make several with one card, and then the Evasive Ornithopter is also a great target for the first two chapters. And then we can also potentially get back all these two mana sagas with a restoration of Iganjo. On chapter one can search up a planes. On chapter two we can discard a card, often a land, so we can get back a permanent card with mana value two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And even if our sagas come into play tapped, it doesn't really matter, they can still trigger. And then finally transforms into Architect of Restoration, a 3-4 Vigilance that can make additional 1-1 one -one tokens. And then going over the rest of our deck, we still have plenty of other artifact synergies, including Patchwork Automaton, a 1-1 one -one with Ward 2, saying whenever we cast an artifact spell it gets a plus one plus one counter, so it does not trigger off the Ornithopter token sadly, but still plenty of other artifacts to grow it. And then we also have four copies of Smelter, a 2-2 that at the beginning of combat on our turn can let us pay one mana and sacrifice an artifact to make a 3-1 red construct artifact creature token with haste, so we can potentially sacrifice our Ornithopter token to make a hasty 3-1. Also good synergy with Iron Apprentice, a 0-0 one drop that enters with a plus one counter on it, and when it dies we can move all its counters elsewhere. And then we also have four copies of Experimental Synthesizer as our main card draw effect in the late game, as we can exile the top card when it enters and when it gets sacrificed, and then we can play that card until end of turn, including lands. So the Synthesizer plays well with Smelter, which can also sacrifice it to make an additional 3-1, and we can of course also just pay 2 and a red to make a 2-2 Samurai token and sacrifice it that way as well. And then Voltage Surge is another way to sacrifice our artifacts, can deal 2 damage for 1 mana at instant speed, unless we sacrifice an artifact, in which case we can deal 4 damage. And then to round out our deck, some additional aggressive 1 mana artifact creatures, Hotshot Mechanic, a 2-1, don't have any vehicles to synergize with it, and 2 copies of a Rabbit Battery, which can also be reconfigured to give some of our creatures haste. We could also be playing with the Reinforced Ronin, which has great synergy with Patchwork Automaton especially, as we can continuously put additional counters on it, but we are playing with Declares War, which is a saga that wants us to keep artifacts on the battlefield to maybe fully leverage the second chapter, so I opted for uh, no reinforced Ronins in this list, but you could certainly try them out. And then our mana base is playing two copies of Thram Portal, it's kind of a necessary evil since we're an aggressive two-color deck that doesn't have access to its pain land yet from the new Dominaria United expansion, so Thram Portal can still help fix our mana in the early turns when we might need both a red and white, and then a four sundown pass and a few channel lands with Crucible and Iganjo. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Turn one, probably go with mechanic. Turn two, battery. Although, we won't be able to spend our white mana on turn two that way. So there is an argument for battery on one. Turn two, maybe synthesizer, in case we exile a land with it. Although we would need specifically white to play mechanic. Sprout, does that change anything? I guess we picked up Declares War as a two mana play. So we'll play a mechanic here. And then declares war maybe into a reign of truth is gonna be our curve. Went with a Gala Greeter, so wouldn't mind killing that with Declares War. So for now we'll hit for two. Since I'm okay with the trade. And our opponent goes for it. Alright, still get to play our Saga, which can also take out the uh, Sprout next turn. Could have skipped straight to Chapter 2 if we wanted to. 
but uh, seems fine to trade our one drop for their two drop. And then next turn maybe a Reign of Truth alongside Battery could be a fine sequence. So for now, take out Sprouts. And then I should probably play a Thrain Portal while it's still untapped. Play this on White. And then Battery into Reign of Truth. And hit for five. All right, so not a bad curve here. Next turn we can pump up our Ornithopter in case they answer battery. Opponent for now planning to maybe chum block with Visionary and activate it. They're looking through the graveyard. Another Reign of Truth, so we can go all in on our Ornithopter here. That seems fine. Turn it into a 4-4 four, four, and then gets an additional plus 4 plus 4. So that's 8. And uh, yeah, if we go Synthesizer, can maybe find a land and then second Reign of Truth. A one mana artifact also works. So this Ornithopter is getting real big. No point in pumping battery when they can chump and pick up Visionary again. So yeah, 14 powered Ornithopter. It's gonna put the opponent to 1. And that's on turn 4, so quite impressive. And then next turn we still have a second chapter ticking up. So we should have enough to cross the finish line. But we'll see here. Opponent's got six mana potentially. For a jewel thief. That's okay. Opponent probably playing Defiler of Vigor in this deck as well. But just replays Visionary. So yeah, we can pump Ornithopter and attack for the win. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This is going to be a mulligan, sadly. This is better. And what do we get rid of? I feel like Synthesizer is going to be useful in hitting our land drops. Restoration plays a good late game. And then we probably need the early interaction from Voltage Surge. And then the question is, do we keep Reign of Truth or Declares War? I think Declares War might be better to combine with Restoration here. Even though Reign of Truth can deal a ton of damage. We're probably going to assume a slightly more controlling role with Voltage Surge and then potentially Declares War being brought back from the graveyard several times. So we'll start out slow here. Opponent on a multicolor Legends deck. And Thalia needs to be taken out. Could play Automaton first. Or I can just pass and kill Thalia in the opponent's turn. This is 3 mana to activate, so no worries there. One potential upside of um, playing Automaton is then next turn if we drew a land, we could have started Chapter 2 to uh, kill Thalia right away. But I kind of want to get the uh, Ornithopter token first. Alright, Wedding Announcements makes a token. And we drew a land. So, Restoration could be okay. Synthesizer is good if we exile a land with it or a spell we can cast, which is pretty likely, honestly, since Restoration would be the only card we cannot cast. Although, we do miss out on the counter from Automaton if we play this first. I think that's okay, since we're probably going to declare war first anyway. Assuming we don't exile a spell here. Okay, that works. Make an Ornithopter, because we want to get this going before playing Restoration, so we can get back our Saga with Chapter 2. Another announcement is strong. So our opponent's gonna swarm the ground with lots of tokens, which will eventually get plus 2 plus 2. So that's a lot to handle here. For now, 
Can uh, tap a synthesizer to kill a token. Keep Ornithopter back on defense. And uh, yeah, Restoration plus Mechanic might be the play. Or we can get Automaton going so it can eventually block their tokens. Close call. Can go Automaton plus Synthesizer. Although it's kind of awkward with uh, my lands here since I wouldn't be able to necessarily play Mechanic afterwards unless we exile the planes. So maybe we should ignore Automaton and just go for Restoration plus Mechanic. And then next turn we can pump our Ornithopter to get in for a bit of damage. Torrents, probably what we have to kill with our Declares War, if we get another chance to bring it back. Sentinel could also interfere to exile cards from the graveyard, but luckily this is going to happen in one fell swoop. So opponent draws two of announcements, one transforms, and then we first pump our creature and then bring it back, discarding a land at this point. And then I think we just take out Torrents right now. Which I guess will require us to tap three creatures, including the Ornithopter. So that's a little awkward now. But so be it. Play Automaton, then Synthesizer. So we can still play a one drop or a land and battery and we can equip our automaton as well but it's still gonna be tough to overcome double wedding announcements needs reign of truth now to pump our ornithopter so we can fly over Baird gonna start making tokens as well. Opponent just sends a team so they can draw one last time with announcements. And I guess we'll block the trained token. Still take eight. So your opponent's deck is going off. Here we can pump up our ornithopter again. Sacrifice a synthesizer, see what we get. Reign of Truth, there we go. And uh, yeah, I think we have to attack here. It's for 11. Don't know how the attack back is going to work out for us. We'll probably lose quite a few artifacts in the process. Double Sentinel can also become unblockable, pretty much. Although I guess Automaton can still trade for them. Since it's colorless, opponent sends in the team. So I'm assuming I'll have to block here. Can eat a 3-3. We can chump Baird. Still has us taking 11, so I have to jump with the mechanic as well. And then I'm not going to have a ton of artifacts or enchantments left for Reign of Truth. Opponent's going to get an extra 1-1 end of turn. Otherwise there's maybe the hope of giving something haste with battery. So is there a way for me to maybe kill Baird without dying? If I double block here, I'm taking 11 still, so that doesn't work. Yeah, I guess we have to jump here. Don't really have a choice. Take 8 down to 3. And then hope they don't have anything else left. Another Baird, just to have an extra blocker. 
There's a Tomaton. We'll pump our flyer. That's five. So, yeah, if I just play these, that doesn't really help out, I don't think. Even if we give Automaton haste, it would be a 3-3. Three, three. Attack with all, they have two blockers. So yeah, the extra Baron defense making a difference. So my best shot is probably Sacrifice Synthesizer, hope to top deck another Vein of Truth. Which, uh, yeah, would maybe do it here. Wow, we actually got there. I can't believe it. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what a game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems acceptable. We'll have to play a Thram Portal early, so that's going to deal quite a bit of damage to us. But I think it's fine. Alternatively, we play a tapped Sundown Pass, and then next turn I can double spell. Nah, I think I'll just go for Thram Portal on red, play Battery, attack. And then if we draw an untapped land, I can either try and resolve Smelter or maybe Apprentice, can even give it haste. Another Smelter. Alright, so in that case, I'll just hit for one, play Apprentice. And then Smelter will be quite good alongside Apprentice and Synthesizer. Opponent on a mono blue deck, perhaps. So they could be holding a few counter spells. Fading Hope also would have been good against Smelter, so them bouncing our one mana haste creature is not the end of the world. Okay, another Apprentice. So we want to try and play as many spells as possible to overload their counter spells. So, do we want to try and play Smelter this turn, or do we wait? The fact that we have a second one makes me less sad if they do counter it here. So I'll play a land first, so they have to pay more for Syncopate, play Smelter, and then if it does resolve, I could also sacrifice Apprentice, but a Make Disappear takes care of it. So now Battery, attack for two seems fine. And then next turn we can either try again with Smelter, or maybe go for a Synthesizer first. Opponent playing a Delver. We could kill with Voltage Surge, although not the biggest problem right now, as we can still attack into it. So, kick things off with a Synthesizer. That resolved. And we can play Apprentice. And then... Probably just another Apprentice. So let me attack first. Opponent's fine with the trade. Works for me. Got a couple 1-1s one that we're happy to sacrifice to Smelter. So this is now the most important card for us to resolve. Opponent with a Thirst end of turn, discarding lands, so their hand is all action. But nope, another Thirst to go digging. Maybe if they have a Tolarian Terror, they're gonna try and cheat into play here. And that one could be pretty rough, although 4 damage, plus 1 from Apprentice can still take it out. And yeah, there we go. 5-5. Five, five. I can play Smelter, sack an Apprentice, and then still Voltage Surge. Sure. So we'll pay the one. And then I could also put the counter on the Construct token, since I could maybe sacrifice another Apprentice for Voltage Surge, but we're still trying to target the Terror. And I guess it does have wards too, so I actually can't make the play I want it to, unless the plan is to just sacrifice our creature with Voltage Surge, so we can put an extra counter on the Construct. It's a bit of an all-in play, but it may be worth it. So we'll attack. And just a 4-2. Put on blocks. So Voltage Surge, my own Apprentice, is probably 
a fine way to do it. And then I can sacrifice the same apprentice to Voltage Surge. So even if they counter it with like a Spell Pierce, we would still get the counter. And hope there's no Fading Hope. Uh, slip out the back. So now a 6-6 Terror. Well, we can put another counter on our Construct, I suppose. Okay, so let's uh, move to combat, sacrifice Apprentice, and take it from there. Just a 6 for attacking. Opponent traits. Is there another slip out the back? There is. Okay. Well, we can make the same play next turn with another Apprentice. So. I guess we'll play Mechanic. And, uh, yeah, another Apprentice. If they have a counter spell left, they can counter it, but they don't. Opponent's down to one card in hand. And, yeah, I think we make the same play. We're getting close to the point where we can maybe attack with the entire team. I don't think we're quite there yet. Seven power attack. All right, now we get to trade and I'll play mechanic and then next turn we can sack synthesizer and still maybe have some mana left over to cast whatever we find. A thirst for discovery could easily find another terror or maybe a haughty gin at this point. We're happy if they draw counter spells now, and yeah, our opponent concedes, so they must not have found what they were looking for. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's missing a planes. Can we still keep, still have Declares War and Automaton we can play? And then if we find a planes, Restoration can get a second. I think it's worth it, especially on the draw. Opponent's red green. And for now we can keep a Voltage Surge. And then, interesting question whether we play Automaton or Yotia Declares War. Probably start with Automaton. So we have more artifacts to maybe leverage the second chapter, as well as the third. Beast Caller I'm very happy to kill here. Before it picks up any counters that it can redistribute. Smelters, pretty good with Declares War, but uh, yeah, we'll stick to the plan of Automaton, I think. Upside of playing Declares War is that next turn we could have maybe played Smelter and paid the 1 to make a 3 1. Is your opponent on the red green aggro? They already fired off a play with fire just to scry. And now a Kumano. And Iron Apprentice was a great draw. So can play that, grow automaton. And Declares War will start on chapter one. Attack for two. And then next turn Smelter plus pay the one. Unless we draw planes, in which case we've got even better options available. A 2-2 Phoenix Jig can attack past our Thopter, but uh, wouldn't be able to block. Could also benefit me to sacrifice Apprentice. Either way, we can tap two of our artifacts to kill Phoenix Jig, so that's why they're gonna Lightning Strike the Ornithopter here. Okay, so do we care about killing Phoenix Jig? Yeah, seems worthwhile. And we found our white mana, so now probably go for Restoration. Get that going. And if we stack our triggers correctly, we should be able to get back our Declares War from the graveyard. The right is a good one. That's gonna hit pretty hard. Leaving etching back on defense. Alright, so first we want to resolve Declares War 
and then restoration. And then we'll pump probably the apprentice. Is my plan to sacrifice something to smelter this turn or go for Reign of Truth? Probably go for Reign of Truth. So I'll probably end up pumping both. And now we'll discard planes. Get back or declares war. And where do we start? Probably chapter one here. And then synthesizer first. Land is good, spell is good. And play the planes. And then a reign of truth. Pumps automaton. Don't have the mana to sack anything to smelter, but that's okay since our opponent's forced to chum block automaton here. And then we should have lethal next turn. So yeah, great synergy between Restoration and Yotia declares war. Opponent's left with a Thundering Raiju all by himself, which we can even take out with Chapter 2. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems promising. Apprentice to go with Smelter, and then Synthesizer, a nice source of card advantage. Up against Blue-Black. Hopefully we don't draw too many more lanes. There's another one that could be a problem. For now, play Smelter, hit for one. And then we're happy discarding a land to Restoration. To get something back from the graveyard, maybe even a Synthesizer. Maestro's Charm kills Smelter. So now we lost our card draw engine, but... I guess Restoration can get it back instead. We'll still play this. Hit for one. And hope there's no Corpse Appraiser here to exile the Smelter from our graveyard. That works. Get back our Smelter. They could have another removal spell before we get a chance to move to combat. They're gonna big score first. Okay, Synthesizer. See what we exile. Declares Wars, not bad. Now we do have to watch out for Meat Hook Massacre here potentially, so that's a reason not to overextend into it. Although that card's gonna be rough no matter what. So, yeah, probably go for Declares War, start on Chapter 1. And then sacrificed Ornithopter to our Smelter. And hit for four. Probably won't be killing much with Chapter 2, is my guess. Going's got a Temporal Firestorm as their Sweeper instead. Yeah, that's pretty good. Dealing five to each creature and planeswalker. So, yeah, we get to transform our restoration at least. Still have a synthesizer, but can't really survive another sweeper. So, probably start by sacking synthesizer here. And found another smelter we can play. Yep. So sadly won't have any artifact in play to animate with uh, Declare's War. So we miss out on a bit of damage. Opponent passes. And yeah, we'll play Mechanic, which we can sacrifice to Smelter. To get in a bit of extra damage. And then we have Igunjo and Voltage Surge to deal with opposing creatures. Another big score. Discarding Bombardment, so that explains what type of deck our opponent is on. 
All right, hopefully no more sweepers in our future and we can get across the finish line before uh, bombardment takes over. But these removal spells are probably not going to be great in the matchup. I'm guessing our opponent's also playing with uh, Burn Down the House, as that has great synergy with Bombardment. So they might have more than uh, four sweepers if they're also playing Firestorm. And yeah, there's Bombardment. Now only three mana left, so they need to get pretty lucky to hit Firestorm in their graveyard. Lightning Strike kills Smelter. That works. And wow, opponent actually found the Firestorm. That's unlucky. So wipes the boards, and now we're left with not much. And now whenever they cast a spell, they get to wipe the board. So don't really see us uh, coming back. And drawing the lands is probably not the way. Yeah, we need to somehow maybe find a haste creature and have our opponent without any instance in hand they can cast. But that's a long shot. And there's Burn Down the House, as we suspected. Gonna make some devils. And a big score also great to uh, exile with Bombardment. Got Ruinel's Vortex. They might have another one in hand to maybe deal with any haste threats. So, opponent leaves one devil back. I guess we'll kill that one with a Voltage Surge. Although, like I've said, I don't think we have any realistic outs. Maybe a synthesizer into a whole bunch of spells at once. Rabbit battery as haste. So maybe that plus another larger creature could do it. Apprentice by itself probably does not. Is there even a point in casting it? But sure. Maybe if we draw a Reign of Truth, at least we'll have something to pump. Alright, so just a matter of time here before our opponents maybe exiles burn down the house. And uh, gets to make devils every time. Invoke Despair, also pretty juicy here. Okay. Well, needed to uh, dodge another sweeper, but we couldn't. And now the Bombardment deck is truly going off. Cut your losses, another win condition apparently. That one seems... Like a bit of a win more card. The Devils and Invoke Despair seem like uh, plenty enough. Opponents got a full grip. And they can probably just close out the game this turn if they've got a few more spells they can cast. We'll kill a Devil. Don't think it's going to save us. If they have an instance that they can cast in my turn, they get to trigger Bombardment again. Restoration. Next turn could get back. A Smelter to make some hasty 3 ones. But we seem pretty dead. A Lightning Strike to the face. That's 3 more damage. Plus whatever they exiled, and there's another Lightning Strike there. Double big score. So we'll let our opponent have their fun. So we're at two. And the opponent's got a few treasure tokens. And next turn any spell gets back double lightning strike, and that'll do it. But a play with fire is gonna take us out of our misery. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's got some powerful tools. So we'll try it. Turn one Delver. Now I'm probably okay playing a turn one battery. 
since we will be able to curve out with either our Saga or Automaton on two. And then turn three, maybe Smelter pay the one, or we can play Reign of Truth. Another Delver. Alright, so the one problem with Declares War is that Spell Pierce could counter it. Otherwise, it's probably better than pulling Automaton, as we'll be able to maybe kill a Delver next turn. So, yeah, I guess I'll attack first and then uh, play our Saga. And start on chapter 1, since I want the extra O2 flyer. Okay, Delver does not transform just yet. And we'll block one of them. Okay, so we can tap Ornithopter. Take out a Delver. And then now... Smelter, pay the one... Sounds pretty good. And if they counter it, we don't need to take any damage off Thrine Portal. Syncopate. Alright, we'll hit for one. And then next turn we could double spell Automaton. Before playing Reign of Truth. Crucible we might end up channeling. We'll pump Ornithopter, and then step one, attack. And then unload some more creatures. Think a bit, opponent's tapped out, so now we can resolve whatever we want. And I'll add another creature to the board. Is it time for Delver to transform? Still not. Their opponent's flooding a bit, but they have a nice one. 5-5 five, five, Tolarian Terror. I'll take one. Okay, at least we can resolve our Reign of Truth. And uh, probably will be pumping Ornithopter. And I can reconfigure the battery onto it to hit even harder. Put our opponent to 7. And do I unreconfigure the battery? I think it's fine where it is. And then we might channel Crucible, which can also help us chum block Tolarian Terror. Opponent getting a bit unlucky with our Delver. Terror does get in for five. And another one, that makes sense. Okay, but another Reign of Truth should do it here. Awesome. And a 10-powered Ornithopter to cross the finish line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a fine hand. The Smelter especially, quite good alongside Apprentice and Yotia declares war. Opponent with a turn 1 Delver. Yeah, that might be worth just killing right now before they can transform it and maybe back it up with a bunch of protection spells. And then we can uh, take it easy here. Alright, Storm Chaser. So that we can potentially kill with Yotia Declares War. And then the question is, do we play it now, make an Ornithopter? Then if our opponent has a bounce spell for Ornithopter, we can no longer kill the Drake. Or I can play, let's say, Smelter this turn, and then next turn go Apprentice plus second chapter of Declare's War to immediately try and kill the Drake, which could also be worthwhile. Could also go double Apprentice, but then next turn's going to be less mana efficient. I think we just go with Declare's War on chapter one, so we get the extra Ornithopter. And if they have a fading hope here, so be it. Drake attacks, we'll take it. They could also have a slip out the back, or just another Drake. Okay. 
So we'll tap Ornithopter, kill Drake. That's pretty good value. And then probably can hang on to Thram Portal without needing to play it now. Although we might end up needing double red later. Sure. And then Smelter plus Apprentice. Or I can sacrifice Ornithopter to make a 3-1 right now. Yeah, that seems better actually. And then next turn, Apprentice we're happy to sacrifice. Voltage Surge, another answer to Drake. So we can pump up our 3-1. And then play Apprentice times two if we want. Although I just need to sacrifice one of them. I'll play another. And then I can maybe stack the counters onto the other apprentice. Or we could put it on the smelter itself. But if we put it on apprentice, then it's gonna move two counters next time. I guess it doesn't really change the math. So we'll just put it on Smelter, Smash. And then Voltage Surge could also sacrifice the other Apprentice to deal 4 damage if necessary. Opponents go to March, targeting their own Drake as well. I guess we'll kill it. And that's gonna save them a, a lot of damage here. So at least they're out of threats for now. And we can make another 3-1 next turn. And still have Iganjo as removal to maybe kill something like Haughty Jin if it shows up. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems acceptable. Turn 1 can play Battery. Turn 2, Automaton. And then turn 3 we have... A uh, few options. Opponent Mono Green and a Liberator can be pretty rough to face if it transforms, especially. So, gotta make sure we keep some spells in hand that we can cast. We're now play Automaton and pass. And then next turn, could start by pulling a Synthesizer as our opponent plays another Liberator. Yeah, that's gonna be tough. Liberator attacks, we'll take it. And another automaton's not bad. So now automaton plus mechanic makes sense. And then we'll still have two spells in hand we can cast in case your opponent decides to just pass a turn to let it switch to night time. Which I wouldn't really fault him for doing. Jewel Thief instead. It's a treasure. They can still sacrifice Liberator, but at least Automaton has protection thanks to Ward. Okay, so play Synthesizer, see what we get. Hopefully another artifact here. Another Synthesizer works. And uh, declares war we can play. Okay, so we probably... Hmm. I guess it's tricky, because if we try and take out a Liberator with declares war, they can just sacrifice it using the treasure. So, probably better off attacking first with probably both automatons. And then uh, declares war second main can kill whatever we want. Could also kill Jewel Thief, since we have plenty of artifacts we can tap. Yeah, maybe killing Jewel Thief is not so bad. Makes it harder for opponents to actually kill Automaton by double blocking. So we'll start on Chapter 2. Can tap double Synthesizer and Rabbit Battery. That way Mechanic gets to attack as well. And 
and this way we don't have the awkwardness of our opponent being able to sacrifice a liberator in response. And then Smelter will be awesome alongside Synthesizer. Opponent takes it down to five. And next turn we can pump one of our artifacts as well. Potentially even animating a Synthesizer to have an extra attacker. But our opponent might be killing some of our artifacts here. Nope, taps out for a Burly Breaker. That's okay. Stays back. So yeah, what if we animate a Synthesizer here? I can play Smelter, sacrifice another Synthesizer, and give my Smelter haste. Do we have lethal that way? Um, I guess I can even play another Synthesizer as well to grow Automaton even more. See what we exile. Another one? Okay. I guess we'll just keep going here. And our opponent explodes. Quadruple Synthesizer gets the job done even in the face of double Liberator. Well, we get to see our red-white artifact deck in action here. And yeah, Declares War seems like a fun new saga to complement the deck nicely. Plays well with Restoration, plays well with a whole host of cards like Smelter as well. So slots right into this deck. Now I still wouldn't recommend playing this in ranked, since you're gonna have a tough time facing the various black mid-range decks in the format, of which there are many, since they all have access to the Meat Hook Massacre, which can be a very powerful sweeper against our strategy. Cards like Shieldred are also pretty tough for us to deal with, since Voltage Surge can only deal up to 4 damage, and once Shieldred sticks it's pretty difficult to outrace. So I would not play this in ranked, but still a fun deck to complete your dailies if you need to cast some red or white spells, or if you just need to cast lots of creatures. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.